Hey everyone, welcome back to the fanciest channel on YouTube. That's right, Guy back here to In Fancy Guy. And today we're going to be talking about nothing else other than Python again. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to shift gears at some point. But today I'm going to bring something new to you guys and how to create HTTP, uh, well, REST servers, uh, REST services, actually. Let me pull that back. So I'm going to create a app that it responds to HTTP requests to you uh, using Python and a library called Flask. If you guys are curious, I'm going to link down below um, the Flask library as well as uh, all the documentation where you can find how to use it. But today I'm going to do something very simple to you, but fancy, of course, and show you how you can use it. And later on, we can use that for something else later on. All right, so to do that, let's create a new folder here. So let's go to our fancy. Uh -huh. Fancy folder, which is the, for my company Fancy Whale. And in there, I'm going to just create a directory and let's just call it the Fancy Service. Good. And let's open that up in Visual Studio Code again. Now, with that open, uh, let's create our app.py. Oops, sorry, not here. Let's create our app.py pi application. And from there, let's look there, let's import import no, from flask we're going to import flask so now this is the flask application and of course it's not installed so let me show you how to install it pip install flask there we go and that's all it takes and I, of course i have to choose the right interpreter i assume that's d1 so python version i assume 3910. All right, so that's not the right one. That's the right one. Perfect. And now you can see that Visual Studio Code recognizes that Flask is installed. And from that, I can actually just initialize our application here by initial using that object that the Flask library gives us. Once that's initialized, now we can just use that app with a decorator. And of course, decorators, you guys already know from my last previous video how that works. So it's just, you know, wrapping things up for us. And we're going to do add a route here for that application. And don't worry, I'm going to explain how that works. So that might, that's my root route. Into, and I'm going to define what we're supposed to do when that when someone reaches us into that route. So let's just say that's our root route, root route, root route. Say that 10 times <laughs> fast. Um, and we're going to return something to the user. Let's return um, welcome to the fancy service. So now, what should what do you expect to happen? So whenever someone browses to the root of that application running, we're going to be receiving that welcome to the fancy service response. So let's see how that works. So let's run Flask. And of course, it is missing import name, which is maybe the name of the service, so fancy service. There we go. And now that I have the fancy service running, it's running on my local port and it returns welcome to the fancy service. Now, that's not just fancy. We're just running a web um, server that, that just returns us a text. Uh, if we wanted, we can actually uh, create here an HTML file. So test.h, well, root.html. And in there, we can actually create a, you know, h1 um, header and just say, welcome to the fancy, welcome to the fancy, uh, fancy service. And I can just return that from, you know, within that server. Let's go and do that with read. Nope. Open. And then I just open the file that we have here. That's root.html. And let's just say that we want to read it. And we're just going to open that as the file reader. And let's open file reader and read it all put that into a variable let's just call the root response HTML I'm being I'm being quite verbose here 
and we can just return that here. All right. Now this is running a as a production server, so it's not reloading every time that we save anything here. So how can we fix that? Of course, we can just um, uh, change the environments to development. I honestly don't remember what's the variable that I have to do there. I'm pretty sure in Flask help, they do have something there. There we go. So Flask environment help. Perfect. So I'll just copy that out. So Flask, oh, sorry. Let's just export that variable. Export that variable here. And now whenever we run it again, it's running on a development environment. And every time I save, it triggers a reload. So the response, so whatever I changed here is going to change and reflect into the output of our service. So now let's open it again. And look at that. That is now a H1 element. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice. Now, still not fancy though. We're just seeing some text into a white page in the, in the, in the browser. What happens if we're trying to curl our localhost here? And I'll, you're going to have some time to actually think about it while I construct that request. Ready? Not found. Interesting. Oh, of course, the port. Yes. Silly gee, silly gee, silly gee. 5,000. Welcome to the fancy service. That doesn't look fancy, though, does it? Not really. So now we have, of course, it looks pretty on the web. But what if I want to make it, you know, a little jazz on the... On the uh, terminal. So for that, I'm going to be using something called the Figlet. Figlet. Figlet is a, of course, if I can type, it's a terminal tool that actually prints text into a prettier format. You see what I mean too. Um, fancy text. See what it, what I mean? So it just generates these fonts using, of course, characters in the ASCII table. Um, so now let's put that into Python. I've actually tested out a uh, Python, a library called PyFiglet. And I'll, 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 sorry, import. So from PyFiglet, import Figlet. So I've been testing this out. I'm going to put the author down, down below in the description. This guy, he's ported out the entire code from C++ to Python. I know, crazy, right? But it's amazing. It works pretty well. So you can actually just generate a... What was it going to do? Yes, uh, a Figlet generator here. And then we can just use f.rendertext. And what it does, you can actually put that into a variable or you can just print that out in your terminal. And here's what it looks like. Exactly what Figlet does in the terminal. But it's native Python. All right, cool. So let's just use that into our case here, into fancy the fancy service and return that out, shall we? Now, right now we're returning the HTML. I'm going to just comment that out for a second. And I'm going to import that from PyFiglet. Import Figlet. And let's just define here the that same Figlet generator. And I'm just going to do the f dot render text and to render the text I'm gonna just say welcome well, let me just copy it out because I'm a little bit lazy you guys know me <laughs> and let's just you know return that welcome to the fancy fancy service now if we do try to curl again into our terminal beautiful isn't it but now if we look back into our browser though, not so much. How do we fix that? So there's a trickery here that I'm gonna show you today, which is related to how HTTP requests happen. When, if you look at the request itself, the network request that we went out from our browser all the way to, the, um, to our service that is running here on our terminal right now, it actually sent out a few headers from the from our request to actually get a response. And in those headers, if I can find those here, yeah, you can see that I'm telling it who I who am I, um, which platform I'm using, you know, all the information that the owner of the server might use to actually render something better for my browser. 
So that's how, you know, applications that you use on the web, they know if you're using your phone, if you're using your computer, your TV, you know, whatever device you're using to actually browse to their service. And that's what we're going to be using today. So into the user agent here, I'm going to be quite specific. I am going to just check if if, if it contains the Mozilla um, tab text inside of the user agent header. And then if it does, I'm going to return the HTML. If it doesn't, I'm just going to return, you know, whatever I want to the command line interface. So let's try that out, shall we? To do that, I need to import the request, sorry, headers, headers, request. Yeah, there we go. So there's a request object inside of the Flask library that just called, that just gets that from memory. And what I'll do is request.headers. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to print that for now so we can check where the request is coming from. So now I'm just printing, but I'm still returning fancy service, of course. So let's see what happens if we try to request from our terminal. It just says that I'm using the agent curl and I'm, that my host is local host. Perfect. And if we go through the browser, it says ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba, user agent Mozilla. There we go. Perfect, isn't it? All right, cool. So now that we have the headers, what we can do is just query that out. This is a dictionary, so I can just use the method get, and I'm going to get the user agent. Perfect. And if there is there there's no user agent, I'm just going to assume that it is going to be curl. And I'm going to just say this is the user agent. Oh, snake case. There we go. All right. Now, if the user agent, uh, if Mozilla is in the user agent, then our response, here we go. Let's just comment that out remove that comment by the way all right so if if our response has mozilla in the user if a request has mozilla in the user agent what i'm going to do i'm just going to grab that html file and i'm going to put that as the response perfect otherwise i will generate that figla text into uh, ba -ba -ba. The response and then I'm gonna return it perfect oh, equals there we go all right so now we have the option of actually checking if Mozilla is the agent that is running on the on the requester side or something else and if it's something else just show something that it could probably be good in a terminal please don't use this in production this is just something to, for the sake of present presenting this to you guys and um, yeah, this is how it would work. All right, let's see how that goes, shall we? And of course, Mozilla is not in user agent. Why would that be? Let's print your user agent, shall we? Print user agent. All right. If we print user agent, we have Mozilla, oh, it's double L. Oh my God, sorry guys. Mozilla. Let's try that again. Uh -huh. uh, response reference before assignment, of course. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, everything's falling apart here, and I'm back. Sorry, my light fell <laughs> from the side of the uh, computer. But regardless, let's get get back to what what was happening. Um, so. It says the response is reference before assignment, which is quite odd because I just defined it another typo. As you can see, I need lessons on how to type properly. Let's see how that goes now. Perfect. Now we have welcome to fancy service running perfectly with the element of the H1 right here on the top. And if you look back on the terminal, it still uses figlet to it. it isn't it amazing? So now we have something that actually recognizes where the user is coming from and gives the po best possible outcome to the response to it. 
Now let's say that instead of using you know Figlet to our terminal, I wanted to I don't know return maybe a JSON file for an API. Well, we don't have to worry much about it because you know honestly Flask already um, handles it all for us pretty easily. Um, we what we can do is just get our user agent here again, and let's say if it is curl so um, elif so if if curl is in the user agent, come on, in user agent, then that actually means that we can return a JSON file. So response response can be a dictionary. And then that dictionary, um, what Flask is going to do is going to marshal it back out into a JSON file, uh, a JSON text. So you're just going to return it all perfectly for us. So let's just say name of the service. Let's say for now, uh, fancy service. And let's just put a version here. And that version shall be um, 000. zero. Sorry. Cool. All right. So now that's saved. What we can do here is just curl it again. And guess what happens? We get a JSON. And then we can just use our libraries for, you know, just figuring out, like, we can use JQ to figure out how what to use uh, that API for. And we've just written an API that receives GET requests and, you know, responds the proper way as you need it. You can use that into pretty much any application as pretty much most things that I've shown you in my videos so far. Um, and uh, hopefully that you can use that for making your own fancy APIs and maybe your websites as well. So thank you for watching again. Next video, I will be showing you guys how we can actually put that somewhere fancy to run. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna give you a hint. It start, starts with da and ends with cur. <laughs> Silly jokes, I know, I'm sorry. But yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe if you wanna see more videos like these. And oh, actually, I'm gonna put here into the, to the side as well the video on how you know decorators work. So if you guys want to figure out how, if you guys want to try to create your own version of something like uh, Flask here that just creates a route for you know HTTP requests. But as always, have fun, guys, and I'll talk to you the next one. Bye.